welcome back to the channel. Um, hopefully you've seen the previous video with the Ilpa Delta 100 shot and dev at 400 and I'm happy to say that the images came out. There's a few scratches on the negs which I think came from something in the camera so I'm going to have a look but then my, my sort of basic look at them they seem okay but enlargement and scanning we'll see where they are so just want to explain my little setup here I have a tray this side to my left with the film in and another tray to my right to accept the film when it comes out I haven't cut them up into pieces yet I'm using as I showed in my previous scanning video which I'll link below which goes in which is going to go into much more in depth than I will here I'm using my film carrier from my enlarger which I mentioned you could pick up quite cheap on eBay even with a set of 35 plates in there this is going to carry this is going to hold the film flat you know as flat as it does for the enlarger so if it's good enough for the enlarger it's good enough for this it's my logic and it seems to work I've got a light table this is a uh, uh, what it says is a CLI 95 level light table, not too expensive, cost me about 20 quid I think. The camera is my Canon R with a Sigma uh, DG Macro HSM lens 105 uh, 2.8. Uh, it's set to, look at my capture, it's set to uh, speed of 30, so that's to be 30. I, uh, ISO 400 and the f-stop is 5.6 auto white balance because I'm going to play with that later anyway when we do the editing um, and hopefully uh, from the GoPro up here um, you'll be able to see what the camera sees so um, hopefully we can do some fancy shots like that so basically let's get on with the show um, I've had a look like I say already, there's a few scratches but we'll see what, what that is. It only seems to be on a couple of the beginning ones, or the end ones shall I say, so maybe there was something in the camera or processing anyway. So, lift up the lid, guide your film in to the, in this particular carriage there's a, there's a couple of like little noggins as I mentioned before, that stop it at 35 or you can push them back to have your medium format. The tray's all sorted, the film's not going to get scratched in there. Light it up. So that's there. And then we do, because it's manual, I'm doing manual focus until I get that green light. Which I'll zoom in on the GoPro and as you can see as well it's gone all sort of got fuzzy red bits on it which shows it's uh, in focus. And then press the button on my capture software which is Lightroom and we get an image on the screen ready for ready to use um, a little app I use in Lightroom which I forget now but I'll put the, the, the link underneath again it's in my previous video uh, to convert them and to move on just literally lift it up gently move along close just line it up make sure it's all okay Like that be happy yeah, the focus hasn't changed the only time you'd probably need to refocus if you get a uh, part of the image that you're focusing on the center and it, it's got nothing to focus on so you might need to sort of refocus a little bit but generally it seems to work that you just flow through and getting through a, a roll of 36 takes a few minutes which is what I'm going to do now so I'm going to shut up and get on with it I'm going to whiz Benny Hill this fast forward <laughs> So that's me done. I'm now gonna uh, so I'm gonna take these into my house because uh, my laptop here doesn't have the the uh, negative lab pro that's what it is to convert these into uh, usable negatives but I'll 
do a little uh, no voice, thank God. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> uh, no voice over uh, video. Just showing you how I do it and then I'll speed through, you know, do a couple like I did before in the other video. Speed through the whole reel. And then uh, make a digital contact sheet and see if, um, you know, basically just look at the images and just see which one, if any, um, we're going to power the larger up and get the trays out and hopefully make a 10 by 8 paper print. So, um, just got back from, we're well, just finishing the, uh, adjusting them. I did no edits, um, as you probably see on the little bit of the video that I showing you how I use the, uh, negative pro gadget in Lightroom. Anyway, not properly. And these are the, uh, just, I saved them and tagged them with my black border tag. Um, and these are the ones that I think would be useful to consider. So hopefully you'll uh, see these on screen. Um, so this is a, a building near me that's just finished being built. And uh, I caught it in fog and I thought that might work. Um, 
our butts. Uh, then we had there's like a little skateboard park over the park. And I thought these might work as like an industrial look. But I wasn't really getting the mood of fog. So I kept going. Then I got this. Which is uh, uh, like a football pitch over on the right there. And I managed to capture somebody walk, uh, driving, driving, riding a push bike. And that, that sort of says fog to me. So uh, I'm going to do that one. We're going to we're going to try the enlarger on that one. Uh, not this one because it was a I thought I maybe caught that person that's just off to the left there. I mean that could work or not, but not really. Not really doing it for me unless you think different. Then um, here is the bench. I like the, the bench over there because it's just isolated on its own. And um, that one says fog, really, like a foggy, lonely, lonely place, either, whether to be or, or uh, not. There's me getting artistic. Maybe this one as well. This is like less fog, but I like the line of it. I like the, the you know, more detail. But, uh, you know, I do admit that one says more about fog than uh, that one. Or that one, which I was just trying to figure out between the two. That one, or that one, which one to do? Anyway, so there's another skateboard fence thing, and I like the reflection. Um, but yes, I mean, it's, it seems okay. Maybe crop that tree out in the background there and just get that hint of trees in the back. Uh, might work as an image, but not for today. This was the right way. <laughs> I love these little things. Um, one for later. Uh, that was trees into fog. That was a, a basketball. But this one, this this tree one, there's a little tree over there that if you get it in the right angle, you can actually crop out all the rubbish that's behind it, and especially with the fog. I mean, right behind that tree, although you can't see it, there's a bin. So if you angle your body right, you can actually get rid of things so you don't have to crop them out or get rid of them or whatever. Um, and I quite like that. That says to me, fog. It says mysterious. It says, you know, something going on. So we're going to do this one. Now we're going to get the enlarger set up. And... Um, start trying to print these. <laughs> See you soon. Right, we've gone through the uh, digital part of the images and I think you can see that uh, they came out because um, it was foggy. Obviously overexposed in the sky a bit. But it doesn't matter because like I say, I'm learning. Um, and I'll take it into account the next foggy day and that's how we learn. But what I have managed to do uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, print on my enlarger um, two images. One is called the ramp or on ramp. Sorry, uh, pretty straightforward. Nothing over clever with this one. Uh, I've done the test strip, and uh, seven seconds seem to fit my needs at 5.6 uh, f-stop on the on the enlarger, and I used a contrast two and a half filter um, and that came out just as I thought it would do um, and I'll show you a, an image of that so let's get on with it uh, hopefully the uh, GoPro won't let us down um, it, I don't know what's going to happen with any of these cameras in the red light um, but on the on this one here over here you can see my tray so I've got my developer my stop and um, my fix and my tray of water is clean. Uh, this is brand new developer. Stops had a little bit of go with it, but it's still clear, that's no problem. And the same with the, the fixer. Um, can't see it off the camera. Oh, you're just going down here. There we go. Oh, well, there's a here's what here's the one we're going to do, the one I prepared earlier. Oh, let me get it off, which is a bit tricky. <sighs> Hopefully, pick that up. But I will do a proper, you know, uh, image of that and put it on the screen. 
So that's what we're going to reproduce right now, which will take but a moment. If um, when I edit these for this video, uh, the this camera doesn't cope with the one single red light, um, what is it? Uh, shoot film like a boss, uh, Roger, great channel. Um, he's gone over adding more safe lights, orange buckets, I believe. <laughs> uh, but he's got lead lights now, I think. So I'm going to watch that and see if I can up the uh, red light in this uh, in this room. Um, but anyway, that's for another day. So let's crack on. I'm going to just adjust this camera so it can pick up uh, what we're going to do and uh, go from there. The negative is already in this slot because I've already done that as I've, as I've alluded to. Seven seconds, the two and a half filter is in. Um, nothing more to do and get on with it really. So I'm just going to move my coffee because I spill it. It's been a hard afternoon's work. <clears throat> okay, so. Right, so let's get on with it. The negative is already in. Um, as we've seen already and I'm just going to turn the lights off it's all gone red and dark and horrible because you can't see anything I don't think we'll see I don't know if I can process it in editing but we'll see I've got a piece of paper pop it in So remember it's two and a half contrast filter, seven seconds at 5.6. So let's go. I think you can see that there, just wafting it to keep the dust off, which is another thing that Roger does. So we'll copy in. But why not? If someone else has learned how to do things, then that's what YouTube is for. <laughs> so now hopefully you might be able to see, so I'm putting it in the developer. Okay. I'll stay in there for about a minute. Start the clock. Just trying to get out of the light so you can get as much light as possible. It's coming through quite nicely. Okay, that's about half halfway now, roughly. contrast these which is exactly what I wanted. Sharp edges and sort of quite industrial really. We're coming up nearly up to time. There we go. So now grab a corner. Hopefully it doesn't fall. The slot's hidden a few seconds earlier so I can just do this now in the stop bar missed it in the dark come on come on oh there we go one thing I did forget to do is I forgot to um put the weights on the corner of my uh, easel because it seems to have lifted slightly because on the test I did there's a slight bit where it's gone underneath the uh, thing shouldn't really do because it's sitting quite flat but doesn't need much but anywho let's see if it's come out in this one if it has doesn't matter it's only a test it's only practice and I know what the problem is so okay fixer for another minute or so In there. And there's our image. So something's worked. <laughs> Just whiz through this. You don't want to see me rocking a cradle. As it were, a tray, sorry. So I'll whiz through that.
Okay, we're coming up to time now. Get, bulk up, get the bulk of that off. In the water. Put my light on, no paper out, no, good. Right. clock done so I don't have um, running water in here yet um, yeah there's a little bit of a bleed under so I'll just make sure the corners of the easel are uh, weighted down with a little bit of something I do have some uh, magnetic L strips somewhere I'll see if I can hold them down that'll be cool I bought them I haven't used them so <laughs> Give that as good a wash as I can in this. Okay. This is RC paper doesn't really need that long, so as I've read. Okay. Ringing wet, but we'll uh, squeegee that off, put it in the drying rack, <coughs> and then take a picture, show you online. But here's a sneaky peek, hopefully, you can see it. Not too sure how that's going to come out. Let me uh, bring the ISO down on the camera. A bit too dark, hold on just one second. Maybe you can an idea anyway at least yeah but again I'll show you that in a minute I'll hang it up on the wall and we'll take some pictures of it and it's dry or nearly dry or whatever it's squeaky okay so that one can go in the drying rack so just over here so that looks alright Double checking my work. Okay, so just gonna change the negative and get on with a slightly bit more complicated one, which is uh, that tree in the fog, which I'll show the digital version. And we'll, uh, I'll show you what I did and how far I got. Um, and then maybe some of you are a bit much more cleverer than me can see how I can. Oh, actually, I've done it, I've done it already, but I'll show you how I did it, how I can get it. If there's anything more I can do with that, other than throw it in the bin, <laughs> and we'll go from there. The idea was that it is a foggy, misty, alone tree, quite eerie, quite that kind of look, you know. Um, and the extra grain that I gained on the delta from using 100 to 400 seems to add a bit. But anyway, that's enough waffle. Back in a moment. Come on. Into the paper box. I'll show you the paper emulsion slide up. Okay, it's in there. Close the box. That's nice and closed. So we have nine seconds, get a wafter. Nine seconds at zero, zero. Let's do that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to dodge the bottom half, but feather it up to the tree with my uh, five filter. I was playing around with this earlier, so I sound like I know what I'm talking about, but it's only because I tried it. That's the five in there. So again, nine seconds again. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to dodge the bottom part. So I don't want that going too dark. Yeah, so, but I also need the, the tree to come out. So, let's go. So you can see there, I'm sort of doing the inch below the tree, as it were, as well. Just sort of, there we go, covering it in. And that seemed to work. Fingers crossed. <laughs> so let's do the uh, 
developing again. Maybe the camera is going to pick it up, but you know, if it doesn't, then I'll uh, stop this and we'll just get to the end and do the reveal of the image. There's no point wasting your time. Thingy on. Okay, so I'll try and get out of the light so you can see what we're doing. Now, the wash, put the light back on now. And we're back in the room. <laughs> yeah, cool. Got that sort of frosty, you know, sort of that, uh, ghostly look that I'm after. Again, I haven't got running water yet, so I'm going to somehow make some room in here and, uh, yes, steal uh, Roger's sink waste idea that he put up. So I thought it was pretty cool because I can do that here on a hose and get a sink and waste bucket to fill out when I need to empty out through. So I'll do that. Give me running water. So. But I think you can see a ghostly image. Let me uh, see there the ghostly image of a tree, which was the idea I was having. I uh, can't really see it too well on there. Oh, actually, if I turn, oh yeah, hold on one second. I can now turn the big light on. That might help. <coughs> okay, so hopefully. You can see that without the glare of the thing. Still wet, but it uh, gives you an idea of the sort of ghostly image that I was after. And I sort of got it. Um, and of course, any tips that you can give this budding whatever, <laughs> uh, be great. I'm going to dry this off and get it up on the wall so that we can have a closer look, a better look. And uh, back in a moment. Well, here are the uh, two pictures. This is the uh, on-ramp. Um, still wet, but um, hopefully it gives you a good idea. I'm under a 256k, sorry, 256, 5600k uh, lead strip. So hopefully that's as good as you're going to get in the, this condition. So now I'm going to swap it over because the light puts a streak on this one. So I'm just going to... Put that one down and put it in the drying rack. And move this one from here. It's still wet. So. <clears throat> Hopefully it'll stay there. The ghostly tree that was done in the fog. Um, I don't quite like that. I like the look of that. Uh, probably could get better in areas. Uh, there was no data, I don't think, in their blown out skies, but that's part and parcel. Uh, the learning curve, I don't think we're probably going to get much in the fog anyway, because <laughs> not what to see. <laughs> but it gives that ghostly image of a, a moody, sort of a bit eerie, um, something I'm going to enjoy repeating. I'm uh, just going to quickly show you where I'm going to store these when they're dry and what I'm doing in a moment, unless you guys know a better way. Uh, so back in a second. So here is how I'm storing these. So this is a, another project, a couple of projects I've been working on. It's a Jack Daniels bowl. And I keep the negative in a single strip cut from the normal one where you put your, you know, six by six or whatever it is. So I put the negative with the document with any marks. Well, obviously these might change as I learn more skills. <laughs> Comments below. Here's another one. One of my favourite pictures. This is um, quarter one of the London marches. And I like that. Um, I call that transport. Bikes, people walking, dogs. It's, there's so much transport going on there. Um, and I've just been playing around with it. And it'll be finished and when it does you know the, the notes go in the neck goes in that goes in a wallet and when those two are dry notes will go on the same way i've got their uh, 
negatives ready in the bullets. Trying to keep it all neat and tidy if I can. So I know what to do when I come back. Anyway, thank you for watching that. Hopefully some of the video came out with the lighting, but as I said earlier, I will be uh, nicking some ideas of um, a shoot film like a boss, which is a fantastic website. I will link below because you should go and see it if you're into the audience nonsense. And uh, see if I can get some more LED red lights in here that don't fog the paper, which is another test I've got to do at some point. Anywho, not problem. Thank you so much for watching. Please do the subscribe and click the like if you like it. And if you don't like it, don't tell anyone. <laughs> you keep well.